Okay, go ahead. Complete that first one first. Yes, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you got to click that one over there. Excellent. They all should be ready to rock and roll. Amen. Yeah, that's it. Glory to God. Well, let's stand up together. Let's uh, pray. Father, we come to you right now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father, for this time in the Word. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will show yourself strong on our behalf. Give us the strength. Give us the wisdom. Give us the knowledge. Give us the ability to be a yielded vessel, yielding to you, the God of all creation, the one who created man in his own image and after his likeness. God, we yield to you, spirit, soul, and body. We ask you, Father, that you would intervene in this service today and show yourself strong on behalf of your people. Now, Lord, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen, of a red or right, or to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth, and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you now to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, in the glorious and mighty, majestic name of Jesus. And all that grief that said, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. We believe that God is with us. We believe that he's speaking to us and through us. And we believe that we are walking in the area that he's called us to walk in concerning ministry. Amen. So we believe that as we continue this way, we're going to see the will of God manifesting very strongly in our lives. Amen. So let's get into the lesson for tonight. Glory to God. Tonight we're dealing with... Uh, a powerful word straight from the Lord because when I came I had no idea what I was going to talk about but then the Lord just put something on my heart so we're going to go with that amen and the title of the message today God is looking for his sons and his daughters to come forth God is looking for his sons and his daughters to come forth. Amen. And I believe that as we uh, get into this, we'll see what God is saying. Because I believe that God is speaking. Amen, amen, amen. Well, glory. There we go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amen. Let me get this this ready. Then we're gonna go ahead on and uh, get started. Amen. Because I want to uh, be able to share with you the word of the living God. Glory to His name. Here we go. Amen. Well, as we uh, prepare ourselves for the, to, for this this lesson today, I want you to to understand that this message is not something that I prepared for. It's just something that's going to drop in my heart for today. Okay? So, uh, normally I'm teaching on healing or something like that on Sunday nights. And, uh, but tonight is different. Tonight is different. And I believe that because it's different, God is going to show up in a different way. Amen. So, now I want you to open your Bible with me to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Amen. Let's go ahead and get into the word. God is calling unto his sons and daughters to come forth in this hour that we are in. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I sense the presence of God starting to come in upon me already. Amen. But I believe that we are in that season where the church is going to manifest like never before. Amen. Now let's look at verse number 14. And let's start reading there. And as for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself, or a better translation of that word would be the Spirit himself, because the, the Spirit is not an it, it's a, it's a, it has a, a personality. So it's a, I like to say, the Spirit himself, verse number 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. That we are children of God. You see, God is calling for his children to come forth. He's calling for his sons and his daughters to come forth. Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. That we may be also glorified together. For, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed in us. See, when we come, when we come to Him, when we yield, become yielded vessels, when we become yielded sons and daughters, His glory is going to be revealed in us and through us. Amen. In us and through us. Glory to God. Look at verse number nineteen. Says, "For the for for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God." My God, there it is. <laughs> Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So I believe that God is calling us. God is, is uh, looking upon us. And he's, and he's not, now, now get this, folks. He's looking at our hearts. He's looking at our motives. He's looking, he looking at how we're conducting ourselves. And he's looking at our attitude as we conduct ourselves. Because he's looking for those that are walking in a way that that presents his presence to the earth. Because we are his sons. We are his children, his sons and his daughters. Amen. So we are being looked upon not only by the world, but by God. But by God Himself, Amen. The time has come for the men, for the men of God to begin to grow maturity. Be time for us to begin to grow up and become mature men and women of God, Amen. Why? Because we have so much to offer the world as we come to understand who we are. We can we. We are, we are the voice of God. We are the hands of God. We are the eyes of God. Oh, hallelujah. And they that are led by the Spirit of God. We are those that are led by the Spirit of God. Remember we talked about this morning in 1 in first, in first Peter chapter 1, verse number, verse number 9. We are chosen generation. Amen. We are chosen generation, <clears throat> a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Glory to his name. So God is calling for us to manifest. He called, he called for the church to begin to manifest in this earth as sons and daughters of God, walking in the spirit and in the power of the Holy Ghost. We are his sons and his daughters. We must take a stand for righteousness sake in these last days because the world is not looking for nothing pertaining to the, the God of all creation. The world is looking for something that's going to tickle their fancy, fantasy. 
Amen. That's going to cause them to uh, 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 have a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a night of joy, a night of 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 of, 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 of gathering. Amen. But God wants more than just a night of joy. God wants a life dedicated to him to bring a spirit of righteousness back into the earth. Back into the earth. And the only way we're going to do that, folks, is to find ourselves in right standing with God. Our relationship with God must become, must come in right standing. Amen. So, so, so God is looking for his. God is looking for sonship. He looking for sonship. He looking for the children. He looking for those that will acknowledge him. Those that will walk up right for him. But we must grow up and and believe that he is who he said he is. Because see, this is the one of the greatest uh, problems that we have run up against. People don't believe like they used to. Just because we've, uh, just because we've uh, been talking about this for, for decades and for centuries and, 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 he, and, and he still hasn't come back yet, people, faith, uh, belief, Ariel, is, 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 is beginning to grow, begin to wane. People are starting to give up. People are starting to, to quit because they don't see the, the, the character of Christ even in church today. They talk a good talk, but where's the power? Where's the anointing? Where's the, the ability to, to set the captives free when they come in in bondage? Amen. God is looking for those that will take a bold, courageous stand for righteousness. Amen. And you know, if you're going to take a stand for righteousness, you might as well, you might as well prepare your heart to walk in the spirit of holiness as well. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Because God is because God is God God wants us to grow up. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> God wants us to grow up and and release and, 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 and to show the world that the God, the children of God, are still manifested in the earth today. God will do what He said in His Word if we will do what He asked in His Word. He will do what he said in the word if we will do what he asked in his word. Amen. The Bible tells us right here in Luke chapter 10, verse number 18. Luke chapter 10, verse number 18. I can quote it, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn that and read it. <clears throat> verse number 18 says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Now he's talking to those who he's calling as sons and daughters. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and over scrotons and over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. That's Mark, that's a Luke chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. You see, you are his son, but even though we have sonship and part of that that means we are part of that royal family what we talk about in, in the first Peter chapter 2 is because he said we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood so we are part of that royal family amen and, and as part of the royal family you've been separated from the world you've been called out of this world even though you're still walking around in this world God doesn't want you to live as the world he doesn't want us to live as the world why because we've been separated we've been called out we've been set apart the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse number one that I beseech you therefore brother by the mercies of God that you present your bodies you God wants us to present our bodies as living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is our reasonable service and verse number two says and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, God wants us to begin to identify with the one who created us, with the one who has called us, and with the one who has set us apart from the world. He wants to begin to identify with him as sons and daughters. Can you see yourself as a son? Can you see yourself as a as a as a son? Uh, you ladies, can you see him as 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 a as your as, can you see yourself as his daughter? 
Amen. Think about it. Because you see, we are, we are part of a royal family of Almighty God. Until we become of age and mature, we are still just like little children because we're still acting like children. We're still uh, uh, getting into things. We still make mistakes. We're still, we're still cutting up a little bit, you know. But God wants us to begin to, He wants us to begin to examine our life, examine examine what we're doing, examine the words that are coming out of our mouth before we even say those words because sometimes those words can be kind of harsh. Can be, and they can also be uh, hurtful. And so we have to watch what we say as children of God. Amen. We have to watch how we uh, uh, using our words, and until we become until we become of age, we are still like we're still just like children. Really, don't have any say so, because you're still under the leadership, uh, under tutorage. Amen. You like you might you might you might you might you you start to develop a voice, but still there's no authority in your voice. There's still no, there's still no, there's still not uh, 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 what do you call when, when a child is growing up you're starting to speak, you still got to you, you got to have understanding of what you're saying because a lot of times when the children go begin to talk they talk because of what they heard someone else say but in their heart and in their mind they have no understanding of what they're saying. And see, this is what God. This is what God is looking at us. God is looking at us. He, he wants to grow up. He wants to begin to examine our words. He wants to begin to uh, have an understanding of what we're saying. That's why He said to study the Word to show that that's, that's self-approved. That a workman under God need not to be ashamed. Right, dividing the Word of truth. If we begin to grow up and we begin to study the Word of God, when we begin to open up our mouth and speak, it's going to come forth under the anointing because we are created in His image and out of His likeness. We are His sons. We are we are His sons and daughters. Amen. So when we speak, when we open up our mouth and say something, it's going to be it's going to come forth with an understanding of by the Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So we really we really are still. You have to come to an understanding because the moment you begin to understand, that's the moment you can begin to understand you're walking, you, you are in this world, but you're not of this world. That you've been seated in heavenly places, far above all principalities, might and dominion, and every name that is named. Amen. So God is looking at us, and God is bringing us to a position of understanding that we are his son, that we are his daughters, as he said in Romans chapter 8. Amen. They did our sons got to live by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So he said, so now, so now we look here in Genesis chapter, and in, in no, not Genesis, look at Galatians chapter, chapter 4. In Galatians chapter 4, the book of Galatians chapter 4, and look at verse number 1, it said, Galatians chapter 4, verse number 1, and it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a what? A child, defer nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. See, in other words, as long as you're a child, you're going to be treated as a child. But the moment you begin to see yourself as a man, the moment you begin to see yourself growing up, you see, 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 your, 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 your parents are still going to treat you the way you're acting. <laughs> Amen. So when you begin to when you begin to to take on that manhood, you begin to begin to look like the man. You begin to look like a woman. Now, now, now they say now it's time for you to begin to uh, uh, understand. Now, now that you are growing up, now that you have a, an understanding about life, it's time for you to it's time for you to start. Uh, uh, Manning up and be the man you're supposed to be, or be the woman you're supposed to be, amen. And then, and, and what, what is he? What is what is what is they saying to you? Now, I know I'm your dad. I know I'm your mama, but you know what? You are grown now, and so it's time for you to start acting grown. It's time for you to start living like you're grown, and you can't do that under my roof. <laughs> So God has called us, see, God has called us under his roof now. Why? Because he, the world is, is pushing us out. The world don't want nothing to do with us. Amen? So he brings us into a position where we can see ourselves excelling in his house, in his care, under his protection, 
And now we are, we're no longer just sons, but we're heirs. Join heirs with Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Experience, we're about to experience, we're about to experience the goodness of the Lord. Notice what it goes on say verse number two. Amen. But but he is under, but under tutorage. Because you see, as long as you're still under the house, you're just like you're still under tutorage. But the moment you take that bold step and say, Well, I'm grown, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what a what a man should do. I'm gonna, you know, that's when you're gonna start experiencing, that's when you're gonna start experiencing the the ability and the presence of Almighty God like no before. Amen. So it said, verse number two said, this is our Galatians chapter four, verse number two. But it's under tutorage, but under tutorage and governor until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Ooh, glory to God. And become, and because ye are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. God has sent forth the spirit of the son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Verse number seven says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. So God is bringing us to a, a, a place of maturity. He's showing us that, yes, you are, you've been under tutorage, but now I see you, you starting to take the responsibility upon yourself. Now you start to, you start to uh, see yourself uh, growing up and you, and you, and you about to get out the nest. <laughs> Did it make any sense to you, man? God want to, God, God wants to get out of the nest so that we can show ourselves as churches of God. Amen. God wants to bring you to a place of sonship. God said that he will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You see, when you become sonship, you become, you become an heir, not just an heir, but a, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus has now, and because you're joint heirs, everything he has now become part yours. Oh, glory to God. Yes, Lord, I, I received that. I received that. Amen. The anointing is making room. The anointing is making room and it's bringing us into a right relationship not only with our earthly parents when we begin to when we begin to take upon ourselves the, the and become the men or the women that God created us to be and then we begin to grow up in this land now we are going out getting our own places and now God is showing us that now that you have you become a man now I can begin to treat you as a man. Now I can, I, I can begin to talk to you as a man. I begin to bring you forth as I created you to come forth. Because now your tutorage is over. Now it's time for you to begin to walk the line that you've been pointed to, that you've been assigned to. It's time to it's time for you to begin to take upon yourself the 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 the, the ability to do and to carry out my purpose, my plan that I've placed in your heart. And as you do, God said, I will be your El Shaddai. I will be your source. Everything that you are, everything that you thought that you would never be able to do, God said, I will cause it to happen for you. Because you have, you have truly, finally yielded to me with your whole heart. See, that's what God is looking for, the yielded vessel. God looking for that vessel that will that will yield to Him and will give Him the whole heart. See, redemption is not just for those that are that are that, that that's in the house. 
the redemption of those that, that take a step of faith and come out of their house into the place where God, is, where God can use them. Because as long as, you know what I found out, as long as I was at, at, at home, I, I, I really didn't, it really didn't bother me, I, whether the light bill or phone bill or anything got paid because I didn't have to pay it. <laughs> but when I became a man, I had to get out of my own place. Then I had, to be con- I, had to, I had to be concerned about some things. Why? Because now I'm beginning to grow up. I'm beginning to be the man. I'm beginning to be the woman. I'm beginning to be the, a responsible citizen. <laughs> now, 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 as long as I was at home, I didn't worry about none of that stuff. But when I left home, then I had that I had to I had real, I realized then that if I don't get my life bill paid, no one else is gonna pay it for me. If I don't put food in my refrigerator, no one is gonna do it for me. Amen. So I have, you so so you see you have to understand when you when you when you are, are still when you're still in, the, in, in, in your father's house, you may be the Lord over everything, but you're still under tutors. And because you're still under tutors, you don't have you don't have much jurisdiction over what you can do or what you can say because you have not stepped in the position of, 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 of authority yet because you're still operating as a child. And God wants to bring you to a place where you can see yourself growing up, where you can see yourself uh Becoming everything he created you to be. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So so that now now note, now note what the word of God said again. That are heir as long as and as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant. Amen. Though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when we, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made it of a woman under the law, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption, the, the adoption of sons. And become and because and, and because we are sons, God had set forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. Through Christ. Amen. So now, Jesus is, Jesus is wanting, Jesus waiting for the church to uh, walk in that full authority that God had given them. Jesus is looking for his sons and his daughters to come forth in the power of the spirit that God has placed within them. And But they still acting like they are under tutorage. Even though they are out on their own, they have their, everything is going in the right direction and so, so forth and so on. But still, still they are not living independent, independent lives from their family. Still, God has no say-so in their life because they're still dependent on family. When I left home, I couldn't depend on family. Now, if I was had a, a long day of work or something like that and didn't have time to fix me some food, I would go by the house and I would eat me a meal. But that's about all I can get from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I could get from there. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do what I want to do there no more. Amen. Why? Because I didn't live there no more. There was only so much I could do. There was only so much say so that I had in that house then at that point. But now I'm in my own house. Amen. God is God is calling us, folks. He's calling us to sonship. Amen. Jesus is walking. Jesus want to walk in you and through you in the power and authority that he has placed within you. The power is given to men. It was given when? From the beginning. So we have to understand what God has given us. It's time for us to start exercising that power. It's time for us to start exercising that authority because you see, we are in the last days and, we, and God is looking for his sons and his daughters. He's looking for them to come forth. When, 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 when man fell 
When, when man fell in the garden, when man fell in the garden of Eden, the anointing that was upon his life, it changed. And it started working against him. But when Jesus came, he restored your right, he restored you in the right standing with God. And that the anointing would no longer work against you, but work for you. To bring you to that place where God can use you. God is calling us out. Amen. The anointing was not on his life to change. It was not on his life changed from working. It, it, it didn't stop him from working. But it stopped working against him. The anointing stopped working against him. Amen. Even though, even though it was in him, God placed it upon him. But when he disobeyed God, when he, when, he, when he disobeyed God and, and protect of that fruit of the tree that God told him not to partake of, that anointing just turned on him and began to work against him. And sometimes we don't understand what I, we don't understand. We don't understand that because you see, we think because we are called to God, because we are known to God, that, that anointing is going to work for us regardless. No, it didn't work for Adam in the Garden of Eden. Amen. And it's the same presence of God that we have today. If it didn't work for him when he did wrong, what makes you think it's going to work for you when you're going to do it wrong? It's going to work against you. It's going to, it's going to work against you. That's why, that's, why we have, that's why we have to, when we recognize that we have done wrong, God said to do what? To repent. Acknowledge your wrong. Amen. And what he's going to do? He's going to forgive you. And he's going to put you, he's going to give you a brand new start. He's going to put you back in right stand. He's going to help you to see your wrong. He's going to help you, and he's going to help you to learn from that, the, your wrong that you've done. And if you learn from that wrong, then you won't go back and repeat that wrong. Amen? Because if you go back and repeat that wrong, that means you didn't learn nothing from the beginning. But when you learn from that wrong, now God is going to bring you to a position where you can, uh, where you can, be strong in that area in your life. Temptation is out there. Just like you said, it's out there. But every temptation, God gives you a way of an escape. He give, he give all of us the same way of an escape. Amen. He give it to us. He don't make us choose it. He give us the opportunity to choose it. Amen. Because when we come to that, when we come to that error in our life, we have to see that. If we don't turn from it, we're going to fool around and yield to it. And when we yield to it, it's going to, it's going to cause us more than we want to pay. Why? Because he gave us an opportunity to turn from it. And because we didn't turn from it, but yielded to it, now there's a price to pay. Well, God... Uh, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. It was just so enticing. Oh, God, help. Forgive me. Yeah, he forgive you. Amen. But because you didn't take, because you didn't, didn't heed the warning prior engaging in it, there's a price to pay. The Bible said the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it goes on to say, as by one man has sinned, so death into the world. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Amen. So when we make a mistake, God don't want to, God don't want us to, 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 to pan away in our sin. God, God wants us to come to him. He wants to come to him to acknowledge our wrong and, and accept and, and uh, acknowledge our wrong and, re and repent from that wrong and turn from it. Amen. You see, you see. I believe when a man received his full redemption right, redemption rights, and began to walk in it, the earth will also experience the redemption restoration of God's power in the earth. Because when you start walking in the restoration power of God, God's power is going to be uh, visible once again in the earth. How? Through you. In you. Through you. You are his expression. In the earth. Amen. You are his expression in the earth. Glory to God. Amen. As sons, we are the we are we, we supposed to shine bright 
That's why he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 13. Philippians chapter 13, and it says, excuse me, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. There ain't no chapter 13 in Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, and verse 13. There we go. And verse 13 said, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do. Are you, are you got that? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of the crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. See, God wants you to shine. God wants you to be a bright light. God don't want your light to become dim. God wants you to be a, 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 a shining beacon in the earth today. As sons, we have... We have inherited many benefits from our Father. That why that's why we are that's why we have to come to the knowledge of the sonship, to the knowledge of who we are. Because until we can understand it, until we come to the knowledge of who we are as sons and as sons of God, we are not going to understand the abilities that God has given us. God is calling us to come out of our hiding places. God is calling for His sons and His daughters. He's called for his sons and daughters. The Bible said they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God and the daughters of God. So when God is calling us, why don't we pay attention to the call? Why don't we pay attention to the call? And why don't we yield to the call? Amen. Instead, we want to do our own thing. We want to say what we want to say. We want to do what we want to do. We want to go where we want to go because this is the way I was raised. This is the way I was brought up. No, that's not the way you were brought up. You were brought up to, to honor God, but you chose not to. And because you chose not to, you, you, you're having difficulties dealing with life issues. You're having difficulties dealing with life issues. God is looking at where we are today because he knows what we're going to be tomorrow if we, if we will, will straight up our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So as sons, we have, we have, we have inherited many benefits from the Father. That's why we have to come to the knowledge of who we are and begin walking in the knowledge of sons because there's a privilege that comes with the knowledge and greater privilege comes when you begin to walk in that knowledge. When you begin to walk in that knowledge. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. As churches, as, 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 as saved churches of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We must attend to the Bible tells us in, in the book of Proverbs Chapter 4, he said, my son, attend to my words. Amen. As sons, we have to attend to the word of God. Like never before. Remember, God is looking for the manifestations of his sons and his daughters in the earth today to come forth. You see, we are the manifestation of his sons. If we will take uh, heed to what God is saying to us. We are the manifestation of his son. If we would pay attention and not, and not allow the circumstances and situation to pull us off guard. Amen. God will bring us into a position where we will see ourselves walking in the power of the spirit of God like never before. We can see ourselves being overcomers. Amen. Let's, let's go ahead and finish reading that, that area what I was reading from. My son, attend to my word. This is Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. My son, attend to my words. See, he's still calling us son. He tells us what he expects of us. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them, and help to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. See, we need, we need to be uh, intimate. We need, we need to become more intimate with God. More intimate with God because this word, this word brings us into an intimate relationship. If we would take heed to what God is saying, 
as sons and daughters, we'll find out that this word will draw us closer and closer in the presence of God. And then we will find out that as closer as we become closer to God, those things that are troubling your body, those, those sickness and diseases that, that's attacking your health and everything and so forth and so on, as you become as you begin to get closer and closer to God, the the power of this of his presence will begin to break those things off of you. Amen. That sickness, that disease that you've had so long, as you begin to get closer to God, those things that's going to be going to, that 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 disease that the doctors had to, had told you that were, that were, he might even give you a death sentence. <laughs> but as you, if you, if you begin to worship God, you begin to draw into into the presence of God. See, you draw nigh to Him, He's going to draw nigh to you. And what's going to happen when He draws nigh to you? Everything that's unholy, everything that's unclean, everything that's unpure is going to be pushed off of you. Going to be, going to fall off of you. Why? Because of the presence of God. Amen. So to become a son, that means I'm going to have a a, a, a son relationship. I'm going to have a son relationship. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to spend time with him. I'm going to talk to him on a, on a, on a, on a continuous basis. We're going to have a, a communication line established so that if he want to talk to me, I'm available. If I want to talk to him, he's available. And he's going to hear what I say. And when I and when I open up my mouth and begin to talk to him, and when I know that he heard me, I know that I have the petition that I've desired of him. Amen. Why? Because I know he's heard me. Because I know he heard me, he's gonna he's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna honor he's gonna honor my request as long as it's not outside of his purpose and his plan for my life. If it's outside of his purpose and plan for my life, then that's a different story. Amen. But if my but if my life is in alignment with his life, then now God is gonna bring me, he's gonna bring me into the right relationship with him so that my life can be an example of his life in the earth. Amen. We need to be more. We need to be imitators of God now. So now that we have become sons and, and daughters, now it's time to start being imitators. Amen. Imitators. The Bible says in in Galatians chapter chapter I think it's chapter five. Let me look there for 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 a quick second. Amen. Or oh, is Ephesians chapter five? Let me let me just yeah Ephesians chapter five verse number one. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Amen. So if I'm going to be a follower of God as dear children, that means that that word uh, imitate. That word follow right here means imitate. I, I'm going to be an imitator. If I'm going to be an imitator, now I'm going to set myself in position to where, to where God can see me as he created me to be seen. Amen. Then I'm going to get to see myself in the same view, in the same, in the same way. And when I do, glory to God, the world is going to begin to see me in that way. Why? Because I'm changing. I'm changing. <laughs> Every time I look around, I'm changing. <laughs> oh, I, I could just say that, but I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse number 12, verse number 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works these shall I do because I go to my Father. Amen. Because I go to my Father. So how can I do that? I'm going to be an imitator. And that's what he said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Be ye, there, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Amen. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us. Verse number two. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. Because we have work to do. How are we going to do the work if we can't walk in his presence? We can't walk in his spirit. How can we accomplish what God has called us to do if we are so caught up in our circumstances, our situation, that we cannot look beyond uh we can't look beyond the lens of our glasses. Can't see beyond the lens of our glasses. Amen. God wants us to see ourselves the way he sees us. God sees us as children and heirs. Amen. Joint heirs. Amen. So that means the work that Jesus did, as you just said in John chapter 14, verse 12, the work that he did, now I can do. Amen. 
Now I can do why? Because I'm a son. Amen. Can I take you to another scripture over there, John? John chapter uh, chapter 11, verse number 10. Verse number 10 and 11. Amen. John chapter chapter. Let me see. John chapter 14, verse number 10. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. See, I, I'm, see when you start walking in, in who he is, when you start walking in who he is, you're going to start walking as sons. Because, you see, God's anointing is, is ready to rest upon those that will take the responsibility as sons and daughters. Amen. Because there are many that, that are in the house, but they're still under tutor. They're still walking as children. They, they Even though... The, even though every, everything that God has belongs to them, yet they don't have no say so about it because they are still they're, they're still in learning stage. As long as you're in learning stage, you can everything that belongs to you, but you don't have no control over it because you have not come into position to receive it. Amen. But the moment you come into position to receive it, now you are ready to experience the goodness of the Lord. Why? Because it's the goodness of the Lord that's going to bring you out. It's the goodness of the Lord that's going to establish you. It's the goodness of the Lord that's going to cause you to become strong in him. Amen. Because you're no longer looking at yourself as a, a, a nobody. You see yourself now as a son. You see yourself as a daughter. You see yourself strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. You're not walking or trying to do your own thing. You, 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 you clothe yourself in the whole armor of God and you're walking before him and in him and through him. And he's walking in you and through you also to bring about his divine will in the earth. God is calling us to a position of authority. Amen. God is calling us to a position of authority. The greater one lives inside of us. Amen. The greater one lives inside of us. Beloved, thou, 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 thou not be, thou, beloved, listen, believe thou not, be, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He doeth the works. Amen. He doeth the works. Glory to God. That was still from John chapter 14, verse 10 and 11. Amen. God created us, created his image. He created us in his image and out of his likeness. God said, let us make man in our image. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26 and 27. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And get this, he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over, the, all, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeping upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Now to get this, male and female created he them. So there's, so there's no excuse, women. You have been created by Almighty God in the image of God also. So now, what is God looking for? God is looking for his son and his daughters to come forth. He's looking for his sons and his daughters to come forth and to take a bold stand for righteousness. A bold stand for righteousness. I don't know about you, but I believe that as, as, as I've received this message, as I've have spoken this message today, have I spoken this word, I believe what God is saying is true, and I believe that God is looking at us, God is calling us, God is, he, he's given us a command to come forth. He's given us a command to come forth. Amen. So now, what are we going to do about that? Are we going to are we going to uh, just sit there and, and listen to it, or are we going to act upon it? As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, in, in Colossians chapter 2, Verse number six and seven, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Amen. Well, how did you, how did he expect how he wants to walk? He wants to walk rooted, built up in him, established in the faith. As ye have therefore been taught, abiding therein with thanksgiving. Glory to God. God is calling us to a position where we can see ourselves as God sees us. Amen. Are you ready to are you ready for a life changing experience? Amen. Are you ready to see your life take on its, its new heading? Then make a bold decision. Say, God, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna honor you. 
I'm going to, I'm going to honor you. Amen. And I'm, and, and, and as I, and as I honor you, you're going to bring me to that place where the, where the, your presence would be more privileged, more ready, more seen, more experienced in me and through me on behalf of others. Amen. Why? Because I'm bringing myself into a position. I'm bringing myself into a position. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my heart clean. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the Holy Ghost to purge me, to cleanse me, to bring me to a place of inner peace. And Because see, a lot of times when people are going through a lot of things in life, that means that sometimes that means that they are disturbed within. We need to be. We need to be. We need to have peace within. We need to be settled. Amen. Within, we need to. We need to see ourselves walking, walking in the peace and in the presence of God. Amen. Because when we can see that, when we can see that, now we're ready to it. We're ready to rise up. Amen. Into our season arrangement. Because the Bible tells us in uh, uh, glory to God, Ephesians chapter. Ephesians chapter chapter 2 and verse number 6. He said, and we are raised up and been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now I'm ready to take my seated, my, 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 my seated position. I'm ready to take my seated position. And then in, in, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 21 said, far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this word, also in that which is to come. Amen. And that put all things under his feet. Amen. And gave him to be the head of all things to the church. See, if God had given Jesus to be the head of all things to the church, and I'm seated in the heavenly places within him, guess what, folks? God has given me that same authority to operate in this earth. Amen. And that's what that's one of the benefits you get when you become a, 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 a mature son, one that understands. Your position, one that understands that you've been called, one that understands that you are seated with Him in heavenly places. God is calling us to a place where we can see ourselves being overcomers. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb by the word of our testimony. Oh, I tell you, we serve a God that is that is willing and able to bring us to a place in Him like we've never experienced before. Amen. That's when you're gonna to begin to understand what He said in John chapter three, verse sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, when you begin to walk in the knowledge of who Christ is, when you begin to walk in the knowledge of sons and daughters, you begin to experience the power of sonship. You begin to experience the power of, of, of sonship and the anointing to lift burdens and destroy yoke and to set the captives free. The anointing to, to, to be the person that God created you to be is within you. It's not something you have to look for. It's already in you. You just have to develop it. <laughs> it's in you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's in you. Amen. The Holy Ghost wants to do something. He wants to bring you to a position of, of authority. He wants to bring you to a position of power. Isaiah prophesied concerning the Messiah, the coming in the power of the with healing and deliverance. Amen. Don't you want to be that? Don't you want to experience that? Walking in the anointing as he comes forth in the anointing with power and healing. Amen. Glory to God. I'd like to experience that. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show that, go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. Amen. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The, the deaf hear. And the dead are raised to life. <laughs> Oh, my God. And the poor has the gospel preached to them. Amen. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for his sons and he's looking for his daughters to take their position and to begin to understand their relationship with him. I have given this message tonight. 
There was not a message that I chose. This is a message that God chose. Amen. This is a message that God chose because when I came here tonight, I didn't know what I was going to minister on. I know it would minister on healing, but I didn't, I didn't, wasn't led to minister on healing. So I said, Lord, what do you want me to talk about tonight? I said, Lord, what do you want to talk about tonight? Because what you want me to talk about, that's what your anointing is going to rest upon. And so God began to deal with my heart about his sons and daughters. It's time for them to come forth. It's time for them to come forth and recognizing themselves, seeing themselves as sons and daughters. Because everything that God has established, you are an heir to it. It's already yours. But you'll never walk in it until you, until you begin to uh, walk as a son, as a daughter. Amen. You're, not, you're no longer a slave. You're no longer in bondage. But you've been free. He that the son set free is free indeed. So begin to exercise your freedom. Begin to walk in that liberty. Begin to experience what God has given you. And know that what God has given you, he won't take it back from you. He's going to let you walk in it. He's going to let you experience it. And he wants you to grow in it. And he wants you to, to exercise it. Because he wants you to use it daily. I gotta stop. I'm, I gotta stop. I've done. I've, I've, I've been, been with you for the whole hour. Now I know that my time is up. I don't want to overdo my. I won't overdo my stay with you guys because I, I appreciate you you coming and I appreciate you you here with me on the internet. Amen. I see that a lot of you that have come and stayed. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. But one thing I want to know: Are you ready to be con? Are you ready to become a mature son or daughter? Are you ready to, to put down the bottle and begin to take the strong food? Amen. See, many are not ready for this strong food that God wants you to have. And this is why this is why you this is why you've been lacking. This is why you 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 still this is why you still uh uh not not certain about who 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 called you, but the moment you become certain about who called you, then you know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. That he's always will be with you, even until the end of the world. Hallelujah. God is calling us. He's calling us. His glory is manifesting. Even right now, his glory is manifesting even now. Glory to God. You that are with me by the internet right now, that's the glory of God begin to manifest on you right now, over you right now in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, those who have received this word, God, let your glory rest upon them, strengthening them, empowering them to step out of the box and to allow themselves to become a mature Christian. Walking in your strength, walking in your anointing, walking in your power, experiencing your glory in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. Let your glory fall upon them now. Now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. Oh, I thank you for it, Father. Let them have that same uh, spirit that's resting upon me in this meeting right now. Let it begin to rest upon them that are with us by the internet. God, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. Receive that anointing now. Receive that anointing now. You that are with us by the internet, receive that anointing now. I'm releasing upon you now in the name of Jesus. Burdens being lifted, yokes is being destroyed, and glory to God. The peace of God begin to rest upon you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see, I see like chains, chains, you been, you, just like they were tied around you. They, they were holding you, keeping you from going forward. The, they tie around your waist. And I see someone on your feet. You're trying to go. You can't go because you're tied up. The devil got you in bondage. And God said, be loose and go forth now. Be loose and go forth now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're set free right now. You're set free right now. See that burden just lifted off your shoulder? You, you experienced that, that anointing? That burden just lifted off your shoulder and that yoke was destroyed. Just, that, just like that. 
that yoke was destroyed, amen, because of the anointing. Now God is going to bring you to a position where you will be able to hear again. You used to hear his voice very clear, but then it, become, it began to be dull. You, you're not able to hear like you used to. Now God is saying, in hearing you will hear, and in seeing you will see, and you will know by my spirit that it is I that is speaking. Oh, glory to God. My God, that's, 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 that's powerful. Glory to his name. The change is being broken and yoke is being destroyed. God is setting the captives free. Amen. It's time for his sons and his daughters to come out and take their position. It's time for you to, to put down that ball. It's time for you to come out of that, come out of that, that, that house. It's time for you to come, what is it? Come out of your, no, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> I ain't going to say it. Come out, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I got to stop. I got to stop. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God is good. God is good. Amen. Y'all get anything out of this today? Amen. I'm glad you did. Uh, I'll tell you what, it ministered to my heart too. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and take our, our offering. Amen. You that with us by the internet, you want to sort an offering today? You want to give an offering today? Amen. LarryBergenMinistries.com Amen. That's where you sow your seed. LarryBergenMinistries.com LarryBergenMinistries.com Amen. You want to sow a seed today? Sow that seed today. You that are with us by the internet, you want to sow a seed? LarryBergenMinistries.com You want to send in through the mail? That's P.O. Box 417913 Sacramento, California 95841. Amen. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have received this word today, God, we realize that we are your sons and your daughters and that you are calling us forth. And so, Father, we acknowledge the call. We will attend to thy word. We will incline thy ear to thy saying because we know, God, you're going to speak to our hearts in these last days like never before. And as we heed your word, we will be strengthened and empowered to be overcomers, not only today, but in the days to come. And so, Father, we thank you, and we bless you, and we glorify you. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name for what you're doing. Amen. Go ahead on sow your seed right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, as they sow their seed right now, we ask you, to, God, you will bless this seed. Bless this seed. And, Father, as they sow this seed, Father... I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that need a touch from heaven right now, that are with us by the internet, those that need a touch from heaven right now, Father, God, that as they sow that seed, God, that you're going to minister to their heart in a very, in a very precious, in a unique way. Oh, yes, in a very personal way. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Yeah, I, I, I hear that, Father, in a very personal way. That's right, in a very personal way. And Father, and I ask you, Lord God, that as you minister to them, that you will cause their understanding to be enlightened, that they will see themselves as you see them, that they will know what is the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. And as you sow that seed, release your faith right now. Release your faith right now in Jesus' name. God is watching each and every one of us he knows exactly what we're doing. Nothing is hid from him. Everything is in the open. He sees it all. So don't try to hide it. Just own up to it and confess it and turn away from it, especially if it's outside of the will of God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Now, Father, I bless that seed. I sanctify that seed. May it be used for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You've never been born again. You've never been saved. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to be born again, to be saved. you never asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart. Right now, I'm going to give you that opportunity. Amen. I remember I, had, I was given this same opportunity. Now I'm going to give it to you. 
You never asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart. Say this prayer with me. You may be a backslider. You may be, you may be one to return to God. You walked with God before, but you backslid. You turned away from God. I want you to know that God's not mad at you. He just wants you to get it right. He wants you to come back into the sheepfold because He wants you to. He wants you to know that you're still loved. You, you're not, you're not been forgotten just because you made a mistake. He still loves you, but He wants you to acknowledge your wrong. He wants you to repent from it. He wants you to get back on the right path that He called you to walk. Just say this prayer with me. If you want to give your heart to the Lord for the first time, or you want to rededicate your heart to the Lord, amen, just say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. And as I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God, I thank you. And I, re I receive it, and I know that it's done. Now, I am forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are forgiven. If you said that prayer, you are forgiven. God has forgiven you. We love you. If anyone here tonight need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. You need prayer? Amen. I'll pray for you right now. Anyone? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. And Father, I pray that you will crown his head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, let this word that was ministered tonight penetrate his heart, never to leave him, but cause him to begin to, to see himself as you see him as a son. And Lord, let that relationship grow stronger. Let him see himself walking in the authority of your word and in the anointing that lift burdens and destroy yokes and set the captives free. I release that anointed now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that it's done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And Father, I release that same anointing upon my brothers and sisters that are with us by the internet. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will bring them to a position of complete wholeness complete wholeness, established in the faith, walking in the spirit of faith to carry out your divine purpose and plan in the earth. I release that now in Jesus' name upon them. And God, I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you again on next time. Amen. Amen.